So for teams that want to hire Ben Johnson as your head coach, and I, <laughs> everybody I don't, does. <laughs> everybody does. I'm, I'm still, not, I'm still not sold that he wants to be a head coach, but he certainly has earned the right to listen and has earned the, the, the coveting of it. You better have a great offensive line, not good, great. Otherwise, you're going to be disappointed in what you're getting. I'll tell you that right now. Well, maybe that's even part of uh, his patience is finding the right place that he feels he does. And that's have. that's one of the reasons why a lot of us suspect that he's not as hell bent on leaving as a lot of people would like him to be. Yeah. Now, again, I don't know if there's any you know a, a deep personal uh, reasons, but. Uh, I mean, money talks as well. Yes, it and, does. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, the right owner. Yeah. Won't have salary he, cap issues to deal with a head coach. So. Yeah, he'll he'll be, uh, it, he, he certainly is a very appealing candidate. No doubt about oh, it. Oh, yeah. But, uh, it's, uh, it, it, I would not say that he's a foregone conclusion to take a head coaching job. As he said, um, or as I think it was, uh, who said it? Albert Breer, I think, came out with it over the weekend that it's going to take the exact right situation for him to leave. And he's not going to do like what he did with Washington and Carolina, where he basically turned down their jobs because he didn't like their owners. Um, he's not going to take those interviews anymore. Um, if he's going, it's, it's because he really wants the job. And we'll see. We'll see. Um, and yeah. also, I, th I, th I think some of it also depends if this Lions team wins a Super Bowl and True. Don't strike me down, Lord. Um, does he want to try to be part of that and, you know, build the dynasty more, or is he like going to capitalize while you know, strike while the iron's hot and, and, you know, cash in? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know him well enough to know that. <laughs> well, Hey, I mean, he's already been more patient than most assistant coaches. Absolutely. absolutely. Time. Yeah. So uh, whenever he does decide, if he does decide, well, it'll happen as long as it, whether it's here in Detroit or somewhere else, it'll happen. Um, do you think that, uh, that it, let's say a team comes calling and says, all right, we, we'd like to have you on. Okay. No, I'm not ready. If someone was also interested in Agnew, because everybody kind of feels like the, if you, if you want a GM and a coach, well, you've got the perfect team. You, yeah. you, you get Agnew to become, to, to run his own franchise and you got Johnson, but let's yeah. say if Johnson is just, you know what? I, I think I'm going to be okay here for the next couple of years. Do they go to Ernstred? Do they go to him and say, well, I mean, is that a kid we can bring along? And not necessarily, yeah. maybe it's a head coach or as a officer coordinator. Say, look, do you want your own position as the as the main OC here? Because I'm not sure he's ready for a head coaching job. No, I don't think so either. But uh, yeah, Tanner Engstrand is definitely a guy who's rising up. And there's another guy in the coaching staff, JT Barrett, former Ohio okay. State quarterback, is a very uh -huh. quick rising star. Um, on that yeah, didn't he just play football a few years ago? <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> not not yeah. very long ago at all. Uh, he has worked a ton with Hendon Hooker as the backup quarterback, uh, but he's also done a lot with you know learning from Ben Johnson, being in on all those meetings, you know, suggesting things here and there. Um, okay. It's, he, so he's a guy. They've got. I mean, you just look at their coaching staff. Most of the like the casual fan will. Antoine Reno, Oh yeah, he played. Hank Fraley, the offensive, oh, he played. You know, Sean Dion Hamilton, at linebacker, he played. You know, you, yeah. All these guys, like Mark Brunel is the quarterback coach. Like, you, you, and I think that's that's something that the Lions have prided themselves on, no pun intended, in having guys who relate to players but could also teach them and show them from their personal experience, like, hey, this is why I see what I see. This is why I'm telling you to do yep. what, what you're doing why there's why there's the method behind my madness and that's you know you're seeing that with some other recent coaching hires too i think D'Amico ryan's in houston is doing a great job of doing that you know you're seeing uh, i i like that and i think that the modern player likes and respects yes, that and i think that's absolutely. something that uh you know a, a, as as far as the entire team building process has gone they have not they have paid very good attention to detail on their assistant coaching hires too and the ones that they got wrong Dre Bly is a good example. Got sent packing after a year, and uh, got, you know, that's you know one of the things that has been very impressive is that this team is not afraid to acknowledge when they make a mistake and get rid of it. And that's the way to go. It really is. If you let if you let mistakes linger on your roster, yep. that just it 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 crushes the morale. Yeah, uh, and I say that from somebody who's seen it with with two different franchises that I've covered and seen it from afar from some other ones. You've got to acknowledge when you've made a, a mistake yes. and end it. Like, okay, 
sunken cost be damned you're gone <laughs> and that's the way to really it's it's a hard nosed way of doing business but it's it uh, it's really the only way uh, and, and that's what you see the successful businesses uh and, yeah. and of course the nfl team it's a business and that's how you have to do it uh, because that's that's all I've really been preaching myself as often as I can uh, this season, especially because yeah. I've I've learned to understand just how bad the Jets coaching staff is, just <laughs> top to bottom. Yeah, because they have so much talent on their yeah. team, there is they no do. other explanation about than they have a really bad coaching staff. And their uh, their defense should not be where no. they're at. No, um, I, I can see their offense role. being poor um, with with Aaron Rodgers being who he is in the state he is. But th that defense should be a lot better than it is, man. Yes, there are a lot of questions. And that's why I think they could look and look what happened to the Chargers. What a prime example. Yeah. And when you bring in a coaching staff and a competent coaching staff. And again, it's yeah. like you said, though, it's not just the head coach. You have to be able to have really good position coaches. Look at the Cleveland Browns. They lose the best offensive line coach in the game, goes yes. to follow his son in Tennessee, and the Cleveland Browns offensive line just falls apart, completely falls apart. Guys like Daywan Jones, who was developing very nicely, like stopped. <laughs> it just stopped. Yes. <laughs> it's so, frustrating. Yes. So it is very, very important to have a deep coaching staff. And uh, and and, and also we're going to look at look at the Chiefs. That's why the, the oh, Chiefs, you're going to – Andy Reid, Spagnola, Dave Taub. I mean, they got like the three best position coaches in the game on one team. I mean, it's incredible. So no wonder why the Chiefs have won three Super Bowls in the last five years, whatever. I mean, it's just incredible. So uh, I, the more these owners get that, and I think at some point, one of these owners is going to get it so much that they are going to hire one of these coaches and pay him a lot of money because they deserve it. If you're shelling out all this money to these quarterbacks, these Daniel Jones $40 million deals, oh, certainly man. you can give a head coach that much money if he's worth it because he's worth it, isn't he? I would think so. You know, that's that's not every franchise is run well. We know no, that. No, it's not. <laughs> that's the beauty of the NFL. And, and for so long, the Detroit Lions were not one of them. And now they are. And it's very new for us and very refreshing. And we're very happy in Detroit. What do you think it was when you, because again, you're, the owner is not a Badinsky. The owner is just, okay, let's see if, you know, I can make the right hire. And then hopefully, you know, that hire will make the right hire and so forth and so on. W was there like a specific hire? Was there like the first hire yeah. that she made that started the trickle down effect? Yeah, Chris Spielman, uh, Lions legend, my personal football hero. Uh, I remember uh, that, yes. She's like, help me, and he did. And he's very big on the process of servant leadership, and he brought in people that had th that same sort of vision. We're like, we're going to do what we need to do to make the team better. doesn't matter if it, it makes me better. It matters if it makes us better. And that's what that's what Brad Holmes is all about. That's what Dan Campbell's all about. If you watch his post game press conferences and interviews, you, you better believe that that permeates throughout that organization. And they've done a very good job of identifying players that buy into that as well. But yeah, Chris Spielman being being the most prominent hire, um, she got that one right, and uh, he brought an instant credibility with fans. Because I will tell you, as a longtime Lions fan, we were fed up with the crap. The, the the chronic mismanagement, the you know chasing your own tail um, when you're supposed to be chasing the, the tails above you, and uh, that stopped right away when Chris Bielman got hired. It, how, it's, long, how long was she making the decisions? Um, not long. Uh, okay. he, so that she became the owner in uh, taking over for her mother, who's still around um, and still like she rolls a my hair in her golf cart. Um, Miss, Mrs. Ford is, I think, 97 years old. <laughs> okay, um, good for her. Um, yeah, she, she's, by the way, she looks fantastic for, for that older of a woman. But uh, it, it, Sheila, I think she took over in 2018. And then she fired Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn, the prior regime. Uh, okay. It was uh, Thanksgiving, after the Thanksgiving debacle of 2020. So not, not long. She, okay, <laughs> so did she hire Patricia? She did not. Um, okay. Her mother did. So her first hire was Campbell. Yeah. 
Yeah, and they they hired Campbell before they hired Brad Holmes. The two had never met before, and they have just worked so simpatico that it's you know it's crazy. And again, give Spielman some credit there for having these guys in mind, and and Sheila for having an open mind to you know. Dan Campbell had been an he'd been a position coach, he'd been an interim head coach, yep. but wasn't really a coordinator. Didn't have that sort of a background. Brad Holmes had been a director of collegiate scouting. He had some pro scouting experience, but he'd never been a GM before, never been an AGM before. She took a chance and uh, gave them six-year contracts, which is a tacit acknowledgement that the team was in terrible position. Going to take time. Yep. And uh, you know now they they're, this is year four, and they've earned uh, whatever extensions they can. Oh, they'll be getting it. Out. Yes. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Who's considered then like the closest thing to a president? So they do have a president. His name is Rod Wood. He comes from the business side of things, and he has done more of um, – he handles like facilities, marketing, yeah. off, off-field off product type things. So not so necessarily I, I, the on-field. Yeah. Um, okay. that's who, much can, more, who would be considered the on-field leader? You know, Holmes does that. Um, Holmes? Agnew, Agnew does do a lot of that. John Dorsey, the former Browns and Chiefs uh, general manager, is in, involved. He's a – Like having advisor. three general managers. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> they do. And, it uh, it, it's, it's tough to point down what exactly John Dorsey does, but he he's, uh, you know, I see him out there, you know, wearing his, you know, plain right. white sweatshirt with lions on it. Just it's his uniform. It's, he's doing there his all the time. He's, he's, he's definitely doing things like that. And that, you know, their, their salary cap guy, Mike Disner is a rising star. Okay. They've got, They've got they got some front office guys that have been there for a long time too that that are blending in very nicely and you're going to see, you know, just to, to go with you know some of the other guys. Scotty Montgomery is the assistant head coach on this team. He deserves head coaching interviews this year. I don't I don't okay. know if he'll get a head coaching job, but he certainly merits interviews. Former Colts okay. offensive coordinator, um, running back, he coached I believe it was at East Carolina or Wake Forest, yeah. one of those oh, two. Okay. The, yeah, I think the, it was uh, East Carolina. Yeah. Yes, it was. Um, and you know, so he's he's a guy that's going to get something. Aaron Glenn, I I would be shocked if Aaron Glenn doesn't get a head coaching job this off season. Uh, yeah, uh, I I really believe that the only thing holding back, say the Jets, from hiring Glenn myself would be he if, played there. <laughs> Go get him. <laughs> would, would be if they see as a Jet fan, you are so getting tired of them hiring defensive coaches. Yeah, because that's get that. all they ever hire. Yeah. That look, I mean, it goes back a long time. It does. It really you've does. Hired an offensive guy, and you've had a lot of losing, and you've had a lot of bad situations where, well, wait a second, we're hiring with defensive coaches, and then what's our biggest problem? Finding a franchise quarterback. So there's a little bit of a. So I think what's important is is when you bring in a guy like Aaron Glenn and you want to hire him. All right, Aaron, what's your offensive philosophy? Yes, Who exactly. is your offensive coordinator? Uh, and I think if you answer yeah. that cor- correctly, then it's a slam dunk. Uh, if it's like, well, it's this guy, and you go, well, who's that yeah. guy? You know, yeah. I'm not so sure. I, we can't go down that road again. As much as we love you, Aaron, I mean, we, we need something. See, what I'd like to see happen is Zach Taylor gets fired, and then just bring him, bring in a guy <laughs> like that to be your offensive coordinator, not that a head could, coach. That could uh, happen. <laughs> it could happen. Uh, so anyway, um, but that just shows you that, yeah, you're right. Aaron Glenn, whether he becomes a Jet or whatever. Yeah. So if he moves on, is there a quick answer to take him over? Uh, the rampant clubhouse speculation is that it would be Kelvin Shepard, who's the linebackers coach. He's okay. ready. Uh, okay. I, I will tell you from watching him, for, he's ready. <laughs> Kelvin Shepard. Now, now, he, now, if Aaron Glenn tabs him to be the defensive coordinator, and that could very That's well true, happen. too. Yes. You know, then you've got um, Jim O'Neill, former Northwestern coach, um, been around a long time. He's, he's he's a defensive assistant on this team. Terrell Williams is the defensive line coach. They plucked him from the Titans this offseason. He's been fantastic. He's certainly got some leadership qualities to him. Uh, okay. There's, you know, they have guys. <laughs> Might not necessarily be the guys that you think of, but, uh, and I'll just say this right now, and, and people who've heard me on the radio and, and read what I've written know this already. I would be absolutely flabbergasted if they went outside the organization to replace people um, okay. at, at high level jobs. Makes so, sense. Yeah. P- position coaches. That's a different story, but coordinators, things like that. 
they're come they're they're bubbling up. They're ready. That's what the, yeah. that's what this culture is all about. If if you think they're going to go out and grab Robert Sala to be their defensive coordinator, you're not paying any attention at all to what the Detroit Lions are all about. 